So, welcome to Friday afternoon. How are we feeling? Oh, that doesn't sound very enthusiastic. Come on. Again. Oh, everyone. Okay. okay, I'm somewhat slightly convinced now. So before we get um, started too much, I have a small prize that I would like to present, and hopefully the recipient is either in here or next door. So, is Phil Sutherland about? Righty ho. Since you have seemed to have discovered a new species of penguin, or at least you spotted our discovery of a new species of penguin called the emporal penguin, I would like to present you with a small gift. Two chocolate fish. <laughs> Give it to your pet penguin if you have one. And here is a reprinted badge with the error intact. <laughs> okay, so I probably should have started this the other way around because it had a other, couple of other housekeeping things to mention. Um, we noticed that um, somebody's banner has been, uh, for want of a better term, defaced which is kind of uncool. Um, we don't do that to each other's stuff, um, given that every morning, all week long, I've been talking about code of conduct and being nice to each other. Sponsors pay a lot of money to have their banners made and to have here, so it would be cool if we looked after them. In the same way, I also mentioned earlier in the week that operating system bashing is uncool. It's just as uncool as bashing somebody for their choice of toothpaste, the car they drive, or anything else like that. So just respect choices because um, if we all did everything the same, we'd have no variability and things would be a lot less interesting. So with that out of the way, let's get into some fun stuff. Our charity for this year is Digital Future Aotearoa. And all this week, the kids have been involved in a bunch of projects, doing field trips, learning and doing an awful lot of very, very cool stuff. So I'd like to present to you on stage Michael Tringrove and a whole lot of kids that are going to show us some cool things. Well, just want to say a huge uh, thank you for trusting us with your children this week. It's been <laughs> a really awesome experience and we've loved being here. Kind of awesome. Makes me think I was born a few decades too soon. But this could be yours. <laughs> All you need to do to increase your chances of winning this is to buy some tickets. So I've just been told, and I'm going to do a little calculation here. Because stuff is online, it's so easy just to go tapity tap tap and uh, see what's happening. So, we currently have a number of tickets sold that is far, far too easily represented by any 32-bit number. <laughs> so, I think it needs to go up. So, we currently have 3,859 tickets sold, which is a good start. It's a good start. It's not too shabby. In addition to this, Linux Australia have said that it, um, to contribute towards Digital Future Aotearoa, they're going to put up $5,000. So, you know, that's almost $13,000, which not to be sneezed at, could still be a little higher. Just saying. But we'll uh, come to the prize draw later on. But uh, next, I'd like Rusty Russell to come forward, please.
for presenting the Rusty Wrench. Oh, that's a uh, Rusty Wrench Award. No, this wasn't thought through, was it? It's, been a long it's a tongue way. twister. So the Rusty Wrench Award is presented to somebody who has performed outstanding service um, to the open source community. And you, I'll grab you a microphone unless you want to talk into my chest. Possibly not. Do we have the actual award here? Are we that organised? Ah. <laughs> Some assembly required. Makes it portable. It's a bit DIY. It also means you can actually take the wrench off and use it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it has actually been used to fix things in the past. Um, uh, yeah, so um, I am not to blame for the Rusty Wrench Award. It was named after me, but I had complete disclaim any responsibility for it. Um, but it's always been this award which reflects our community, which is about basically jumping in um, into the chaos and just doing something because you see that it needs doing. Um, and I think that is our most valuable attribute, is that... You know, we, especially this conference, you've always got, like, you know, it's run by volunteers. There's always stuff that's not quite as polished as it could be. And that is deliberate because that encourages you to step up and actually go and do something. And that's how we, that's how we suck you in. And <laughs> this reflects those who were suckered in the most. <laughs> and who stepped up and have consistently just worked behind the scenes and, and done the hard yards and actually you know, uh, contributed a huge amount. So um, the reward's kind of unique in that way in that it really is about um, recognising people who've just gotten up and done things, not those who, first, who were, you know, paid to do it or, you know, um, who, the ones who just got up and did it. So drum roll, please. <laughs> I don't even have to say anything. Um, just to carry on from what Rusty was saying, the person who we uh, are awarding the Rusty Wrench Award to this year has embodied all of the values that make Linux Australia and Linux ConfAU shine. This person served on the Linux Australia Council for six years, three of those in the role of president. He's been instrumental in the running of two LCAs in Hobart. Mr. Hesketh, would you come on down? you say to that? I mean, obviously, makes me the most gullible in the room, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's um, uh, truly, uh, sincerely a, a privilege and an honour to receive this award, so thank you very much. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to stand here and not feel a bit like an imposter, since uh, I think everybody in this room, in some not insignificant way, has contributed deeply to uh, both open source and our community. Uh, and of course the rooms next to us and people who couldn't make it. Uh, for me, the reason I do what I have done in this community is because of just uh, how awesome everyone else is as well. And it's... Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, free and open source software is something that I, that I deeply uh, truly believe in. And we are all helping making that happen. So. I think my thanks goes to all of you. <laughs> Couldn't have gone to a more deserving person. Okay. Now we have a whole lot of fun lined up in the form of lightning talks. So you might remember from earlier on lightning talks, so when you take a really long talk and you cram it down to three minutes and have a whole lot of fun with it. And to take you through that um, this afternoon is Chris. Hi. Uh, Martin Croft. 
And it's time for me to put down the mic and hand back over to our wonderful LCA 2019 organizer, Stephen Sykes. Speaking of wonderful, Chris, could you come back, please? On behalf of um, the team, I'd like to thank you for not only running Developer Deliver MiniConf, but also, yet again, being um, coming forward to volunteer to run the Lightning Talks yet again. Thank you very much. <laughs> and here, let's fast forward a little bit here. So, most people like numbers, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I've got a whole bunch of them. But before I do, can anyone just have a guess as to about how many people do you think attended LCA 2019 all up? So probably amongst all of that, I might have heard the right answer, but there was too much interference. <laughs> Looking like this kind of ticket type. So we had a lot of cool volunteers this year. <laughs> what really impresses me is this next slide. This is where we all came from. People traveled from a very long way away. That's how many coffee vouchers we went through. In reality, it's actually higher because the coffee caravan outside went through just over 1,000 espressos. On top of that, that's just um, the coffee vouchers plus the 1,000 espressos does not take into account the um, coffees that people bought once your vouchers ran out. So it's even higher again. Um, in addition, um, our, our lovely caterer, Victoria Food Service, who thought the food was pretty cool? Yeah? yeah. I was sitting beside one of our volunteers by lunchtime and she looked at what I had and because I specify dietary requirements and she goes, oh, that looks awesome. Um, and, I, and she said, oh, I wish I had some dietary requirements. So I said, <laughs> perhaps you should get some. <laughs> so Victoria Food Service said that um, they went through 2,700 pieces of finger food. There were 280 volunteer lunches plus 121 dietary meals, and there were 18,000 morning and afternoon tea items. So I don't think anyone went too hungry. So um, after Dana Lewis spoke in her keynote earlier in the week, we arranged so that any raspberry pies that we had left over um, would be donated to her cause, and I asked if anyone had a raspberry pie that they didn't want to keep, um, could drop off at reception. So 11 people did that. This does not include the pies that we've got left over, um, because we haven't counted those yet. So this is a really cool number to see, and I'm sure it's, that's probably going to more than double. So we'll make sure they all get to Dana for um, the work that she's doing, which is awesome. <laughs> so no LCA can be done without the help of a lot of sponsors. And IBM have been there every year for the last 20 years. And joining us this year was private internet, internet access. So please, everyone, join me to thank them. <laughs> As our King Penguin sponsors, we've got Arm and Catalyst. <laughs> Royal Penguin, we've got Red Hat, Sousa, and VMware. <laughs> uh, 
Next up, Hoi Hoi Yellow Eyed Penguin, Tate and Sindio Thinling. <laughs> and White Flippered Blue Penguin is Allied Talisus. <laughs> Our ferry sponsor this year was the New Zealand Open Source Society. And outreach and inclusion was Google. <laughs> if you're loving our artwork, you might want to chase up Callum and Co for, um, and get them to do your work for you. These guys were really responsive um, and open to uh, designs that we had. Um, if I needed something done, I'd just flick off an email and later on that same, that day or maybe early the next day, I'd have what I'd want. So they were awesome. And our venue sponsor, the University of Canterbury, um, they have provided all this space for us to use. And this is the biggest conference that I've ever had here. So you're the first. Thank you. <laughs> we also use quite a few suppliers. Um, Air New Zealand offers a 5% discount for people traveling from certain cities from Australia. Gandhi did our email hosting and domain name. PB Tech got us all the USB cables and Chromebooks. Raspberry Pi Trading um, provided us with um, 650 Raspberry Pis for this conference. We have Annie's Nannies looking after um, children from six months to five years. Uh, UC Print did all the um, coffee, um, coffee cards and a lot of other materials like the badges and things you see everyone wearing. Uh, Richie's Coach Lines took you out um, to dinner. The New Zealand Open Source Society has um, helped us from the very, very beginning by offering us the next cloud service and mailing list so we could all coordinate our communications together quite easily. And Victoria Food Service um, kept our tummies full. <laughs> and George Campbell was the fellow responsible for making the Pranamu um, um, gifts that um, speakers received, which are really awesome pieces of artwork. We had um, support from the very beginning from the Christchurch Convention Bureau, Claire Hector Taylor and Jesse Ross. We've got the student accommodation and also Doubletree where speakers got to um, enjoy their time. And there's bound to be someone I forgot, but uh, they've got their own slide. <laughs> <laughs> but before we see that particular slide, <laughs> every single year, lots of awesome talks get presented at LCA. It's an awfully, awfully um, taxing task to go through well over 400 papers and review read every single one of them and rank them and try to put together, out of all these submissions, um, an excellent talk schedule. And everyone is welcome to submit something to this. And I'd like to invite Katie McLaughlin up to talk, or Lily, or both. Yeah, the power of two. Hi, I'm Katie, this is Lily. We form part of the Papers Committee and the Papers Committee wants you to submit a talk to LCA. Um, the LCA is pretty cool, um, but it really needs three things to function. It needs a venue, it needs attendees, you lot, but it also needs speakers. And we really just want you to submit talks to LCA because you might have enthusiasms that you want to speak about. You may be doing some really interesting work that you want to speak about. You may want to run a mini conf and get other people to speak instead of you. Um, we can't make an LCA happen unless we have speakers, and that could be you. So if you've uh, felt inspired by anything you've seen this week, anything that you've made this week, anything that you've thought of this week, something you heard that sent you off on a tangent, we want you to channel that enthusiasm into thinking about how you could present it at LCA in 2020 and submit something. Thanks. 
Actually, I need to put that back. Because I would like to invite to the stage um, Kathy Reed, please. You got yours. Every single year, the LCA team goes above and beyond. It takes 12 to 18 months of planning, alcohol, <laughs> and above all, dedication, commitment, and an incredibly, incredibly diverse range of skills to put on a conference as excellent as this one has been this week. Wouldn't you agree with me? So I have a couple of very small gifts to give on behalf of Linux Australia. But the first gift I have to give, Stephen, is not for your Lisa. It's actually for your wife, Tracy. So Stephen, come here. <laughs> I won't bite, because it's against the code of conduct. <laughs> I would like to give you these to give to Tracy, because wow. we know how much, uh, how much effort, how much tolerance, and uh, how much incredible, incredible compassion and kind-heartedness goes into supporting someone, or someone's partner, someone's spouse while they do LCA. So I'd actually like a round of applause for Stephen's. Tolerance was probably a good choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> We also have something for you and Lisa. Is Lisa around? Where's Lisa? Come on down. Now, Lisa, for you, we've got three bags, but that's okay. You didn't miss out, Stephen, I promise. Um, so I, I, I'm going to drop these if you don't grab them. <laughs> Um, Lisa, thank you so much for all of the work that you've done for LCA 2019 in Christchurch. Um, we haven't seen you around for much of the conference, but we know that's because you've been making everything work behind the scenes. You're an absolute superstar, Lisa. <laughs> you will have no idea what we've got you. Sorry, that was an inside joke. It's, she may know what I got her. But we've managed to keep it hidden from you all week. Um, Stephen, you might want to open your present here. I promise it won't be too embarrassing. So just a little bit? <laughs> How much do you trust me? Oh. <laughs> Probably a lot, given that when I asked what title to put up there, you should just go with it, and I, I wrote that. <laughs> you might want to have a look at this, because we, we know that you like tools. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> So, it is... <laughs> there's more. <laughs> oh, there's it's much more. It's actually a toy tool set. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We... <laughs> Safety first. I know. Hey, you've got your own. You've got three. <laughs> got three bags. <laughs> It is just a fake present. We're going to get Stephen something very, very special because he wouldn't drop any hints about what might have been a good present for me to get him. But no, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the house, would you please join me in thanking Stephen and Lisa.
Now that I've left you both speechless, <laughs> um, I know that you probably want to bring your team up here to, to thank them as well. We will, we will get to that. No problem. I have a plan. Oh. <laughs> I always have a plan. No problem. <laughs> oh, perhaps. Uh, actually, um, Kathy was entirely right when she said that I didn't want to drop hints. In fact, I tried to talk her out of it. Right, so I don't think we've got enough time to do um, a rolling LCA this time, so we might have to wait a wee bit, say, give it a year. Where to from here? Somebody might want to come and tell us about that. Very soon now. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, hashtag Team Antarctica 2020. <laughs> Assuming that problem's fixed. <laughs> No. <laughs> just, in the, just in the nick of time, you reckon? Yeah. So what? Did somebody say we're playing 1970 now? Yeah. Oh, awkward. Talk. I could talk. I'm waiting for someone to, from the next year's team to come up here and not leave me, ha leave me hanging. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I could sing. <laughs> well, I'll qualify that. I could attempt to sing. Oh, would you like an update? Okay. Oh, the please hold music's in my head. I can't externalize it. So, it's gone up. It's not under 4,000 anymore. Currently, 4,249 raffle tickets have been bought. But this is an odd number. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody make it even, please. Are you good to go? Yeah. Sweet. I think I'm good to go. So, hello. Um, a huge thanks to the organizers for LCA 2019 for running a truly fantastic conference. <laughs> so, I'm really happy to be here, standing in front of you today, because we think we've really got one through the goalposts this year, or next year, and that we're finally bringing the conference to... So, here's what we've planned in regard to the venue. <laughs> we've got some of the transport to and from the events. <laughs> we have sorted out the accommodation. Well, a bit ahead of myself. I, I haven't got the final confirmation for this, but it should be coming very soon. Um, AV have already got us set up, so we won't need to ship too much equipment over. We have a penguin dinner under the stars. <laughs> and obviously, coming back from the penguin dinner. 
We might even be thinking about bringing back the dunk tank, <laughs> <laughs> which might be a bit colder this time around. Now, um, ooh, that's it. Ooh, hang on, sorry. Hello? <laughs> yeah, 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 good. Uh, I'm doing the presentation now. They seem keen for Antarctica. Yeah, Antarctica. No, Antarctica. <laughs> you know, one through the goalposts. Yeah, yeah, goalpost. No, no, not cock. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, I'll put this down. <laughs> That. I have fixed it now. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> oh, it works. <laughs> So, as you might have worked out, we're going to the Gold Coast. So, we'd like to welcome you all back to Australia next year to LCA 2020. As one of Australia's most iconic destinations, the Gold Coast provides the perfect place to hold Linux Confeu's 21st birthday. There are. <laughs> <laughs> There are plenty of places to explore before and after the conference, as well as during. You can sit back and relax at the beach, go for a walk on the beach, go and spend some time making sandcastles at the beach. There are a few more things as well. So, as you can see, a beach. Um, <laughs> situated on the coast of southeast Queensland, the Gold Coast is Australia's largest non-capital city. It's got more than 300 days of sun a year and a thriving beachside city that definitely delivers the sun, sand and surf that you'd expect. But I know that not all of us are avid beachgoers, so the good news is the Gold Coast hinterland is just a short drive away and you can go for thing, walks to waterfalls or maybe you'd prefer to go to the rainforest or maybe one of the many wineries that are in that area. So beyond the iconic beaches, there's also a vibrant nightlife on the Gold Coast. There's also a brand new arts precinct that was installed as part of the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games in 2018. Or maybe you're a little bit more adventurous. I know I'm not, but some people like this type of thing. And we've got Movie World, Sea World, Wet n Wild, Dream World, all just a short drive away. So, where are we going to be? This place here, the Gold Coast Convention and Exhibition Centre. So, it's a pretty new, venue, pretty good venue. It's very spacious, it's got a lot of rooms, it's very close to the beach, so you can just walk over there. And, of course, there's lots of other things around, restaurants, cafes, bars, you name it, all within walking distance. If you want to go and explore a little bit more, you could go and take the light rail. This connects the conference centre, where we're going to be, all the way through to the northern end of the Gold Coast, which connects to the train, which goes to Brisbane. So you can go a fairly long way. So you might be wondering, how do I actually get there? Because I don't know how many people are from the Gold Coast. You probably need to fly in. Well, the good news is, We've got one of these things, it's an airport, and it's pretty close, as you can see from 
the Gold Coast Airport to Broadbeach. Now that has flights in and out from major um, Australian locations as well as several international destinations. Unfortunately it doesn't service all international and Australian locations, so the good news is we've got another airport just up there. And that train that I mentioned earlier goes all the way straight from Brisbane Airport through to the Convention Centre via the light rail, so it's pretty simple to get there. So, I'd like to welcome you all to come to the Gold Coast next year from the 13th to the 17th of January at the Gold Coast Convention and Exhibition Centre for LCA 2020. And now I'll hand back to this year's conference director, Stephen. Thank you. Right. Let's see if that uh, number became even or not. Please hold. <gasps> it did. It did. 4,256 tickets. Yes. <laughs> so, that brings us to $13,512 for Digital Future Aotearoa. Well done. So, should we just assume that I won? <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we'll do it differently. So, Rusty, could I please ask you to come forward to make the draw? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> You're going too fast. I think I put all the parts back in the box. <laughs> so, who managed to, um, oh, hang on. Wrong window, wrong screen. There we go. We're sorted. Who got to check out the airport, Red Joey, on the way in? Yeah? Anyone next door? Where's your hand? What'd you think? Yeah. Kathy was the first person to register. So um, there's a few people to thank who have contributed immensely to the smooth running of this LCA for 2019. So I'd like to please um, bring forward all of the Code of Conduct team up here, please. Thank you all for volunteering for, um, 
for a role that can have challenges, interesting situations that can be very delicate and require um, sensitivity to follow through and resolve. Um, it's not a role that everyone is um, cut out for. So thank you very much for putting your hands up for such an important role. Thank you. You can stay if you want or you... So. <laughs>
So um, just looking at my computer here, and I think I'm confident a slide I put in has disappeared. So I'll improvise, because that's what I do. So, um, and I'll be really embarrassed if I later on find out, oh, it was there later on, but that's okay. I'll just talk into the future. So um, I thought you might like to know how we got here. So um, I'm new at this. So in 2015 was my first LCA, and two things really impressed me. One, no one sells you anything except the raffle ticket. Two, everyone is so incredibly nice and friendly. Um, even though the Pac-Man rule has just been recently talked about in the last few years, it was already happening. It was, it was an auto Pac-Man rule, just already happening. So um, what Steve and Cherie did back then was, was awesome and inspired me. And then I thought, hang on a second. There's an imbalance in the force. We have Dunedin, we have Wellington, we have Auckland. There's one missing out of this set. <laughs> That's where I was going with that, Ian Bacargo. So it was at that point I decided to change it. And here we are. Not having done anything like this before, I didn't think about it really. <laughs> <laughs> Probably paid not to. <laughs> so um, if I can offer advice to next year's team and um, all the other teams, what help got me through was a lot of beetroot juice. <laughs> and based on the conversation I had with Keith Packard on Tuesday night, he said, you Kiwis and your beetroot juice, or uh, well, just beetroot, yeah, now I know what you meant. <laughs> um, also, a lot of Imagine Dragons, that also helps. Oh, somebody said about singing earlier, eh? Were you still keen for that? Yeah! So one of, one of my um, favourites is, um, and it's been a personal anthem, if you like, is whatever it takes, because that's been my attitude. So. If uh, the pressure on being on stage doesn't get to me, I could start rapping it. I don't think I'll do it as good as Daniel Reynolds, but it, now how does that go? Falling too fast to prepare for this, tripping the world could be dangerous, everybody circling is vulturous, negative, nepotist, everybody waiting for the fall of the man, everybody praying for the end of time, everybody hoping they could be the one, as born run, as born for this, whip, whip, run me like a race horse. That's putting me off. <laughs> now where was I? <laughs> whip, whip, run me like a racehorse, put me like a ripcord, break me down and build me up, I want to be the slip, slip, word up on your lip, lip, ladder that you rip, rip, break me down and build me up, whatever it takes. Because I love the adrenaline in my veins, I do whatever it takes. <laughs> You take me to the place I'm ready for, sorry, to the top that I'm ready for, whatever it takes. Because I love the adrenaline in my veins, I do what it takes. <laughs> I did qualify earlier, it was an attempt at singing, not actually doing it. So there's a few other people that were involved with running this, and if they weren't involved, it would make my job so much, so much harder. And that's the core organising team. So I'd like, please, to welcome down here Lisa, Wayne, Andrew, Toby, Bevan, and Mental Block. Does that equal everybody? It probably does not. Oh, how can I forget you, Isla? So, where's Bevan? Bevan? Bevan, Bevan can you hear? 
Bevan, can you hear me? Come in over. It's all right. We've got all night. <laughs> so, these beautiful people have been with me pretty much since the beginning and have been persistent throughout. And one of the, one of the cool things that with all our meetings and all the discussions we've had about everything, even when there have been disagreements, it's always been there's always been a level of respect. There was never a situation where a situation needed to be resolved with a cage match, which was a good thing. So you guys have been the um, magnetism to my frictionless bearing. You've been the additive to my limited slip differential. <laughs> You've been the wind, wind beneath my wings since 2015. So thank you very much for persisting with this journey. Seated. <laughs> so we're nearly done, and um, I had a request the other night at the PDNS because Ayla here has been our speakers coordinator, and she has a re reputation, a very excellent reputation for. Um, speaking in a language she didn't grow up with. And as you um, all go back to doing what you're doing, we'd like to wish you on your way, safe journeys back home, and I'd like Ayla to do that. Kua haere mai pai. A hoki payatu kite kaina. Welcome.